When you want to test some Windows Server services such as DHCP, DNS or even Active Directory, the best way is to install them on a virtualized environment. There are multiple hypervisors out there that you could use. In this video, we are going to see how you can install Windows Server on a virtual box. If you wanted to see the step-by-step -step procedure, you can head over to google.com and search for Windows Server on VirtualBox and my website name getlabston and hit enter. This article is from my website getlabston.com and you will see the step-by-step -step instructions on how you can install Windows Server on a virtual box. Before you begin, there are two prerequisites. First, you need to download and install VirtualBox hypervisor by clicking the link here. After that, you need to download the Microsoft Windows Server ISO or VHD file by going into the Microsoft Evaluation Center by clicking here. The reason we are downloading the ISO and the VHD file because we'll be looking at two methods with which you can install the Windows Server on VirtualBox. One with ISO file and other with VHD. If you already have the ISO or VHD image, you are good to go. I have already downloaded and installed VirtualBox on my machine, so let me open that up. We are going to perform the ISO based installation first and later we will see how you can install it with the VHD. So let's begin. First step is to create Windows Server VM. In the virtual box, click on new. In the VM installation wizard will now open. You will have two options. One is expert mode and the second is guided mode. I would recommend you stick with the guided mode. Name the VM. I am naming it as Windows Server 2019 and the location of the VM. I am leaving the default. If you have a different drive with more storage, you click on the drop down from the machine folder and choose other to select a different folder. Though I am installing the Windows Server 2019, the step mentioned here are identical for other Windows Server versions as well. When I type the machine name, it already picked up the VM type Microsoft Windows as you can see. However, the version it is selected as Windows 7. We need to change that. Let's change that to server 2019. Alright, let's click on next. We are now going to allocate the memory size for the VM. By default, it picked up 2 gigs of RAM, which is enough for me and I'm going to keep the default. If you want, you can increase the memory here based on your need and click on next. As we are using the ISO based installation, we will have to create a virtual hard disk. Hence, choose the option create a virtual hard disk now and click on create. You now have to choose the virtual hard disk file type. By default, it will choose as a VDI file. If you are going to use this VM permanently with the virtual box, don't have any plan to move this VM to other hypervisors, you can leave the default option which is VDI. However, I would like to choose the VMDK format because it would be easy for me to move this VMDK files from virtual box to other hypervisors, for example VMware workstation in the future. Hence, select that and click on next. In the storage on a physical hard disk, choose dynamically allocated and click on next. You can see that the selected hard disk have chosen the location that we defined earlier and the size of the hard disk by default it has picked up 50 gig and I am leaving the default. If you wanted to change that, you may do so here. Click on create and you will see a Windows Server VM is created in the virtual box. We are now going to attach the Windows Server ISO image that we downloaded earlier. So the virtual box can start the Windows Server installation. Right click on the VM that you have just created and click on settings. Under storage and storage devices, choose the empty disk file and on the right side click on the disk drop down button and choose the disk file button and attach the ISO image that you have downloaded and click on OK. To begin the installation of the Windows Server, you can select the VM and click on start. After a few seconds, you will get a prompt for the Windows Server installation and it will prompt you to choose the ISO image. Since I have already attached the ISO, it is by default selected, so click on start. You need to also make sure that the ISO image that you have chosen is the right one. The installation typically takes time, so you need to have little patience. You've got the Windows Server 2019 installation wizard now. Select the language of your choice and the keyboard layout and click on next. I'm leaving the default settings. If in case you wanted to change the settings, you may do so here and click on next. 
and click on install now. The Windows Server has a CLI and GUI version. So it is important that you choose the right version that fit for your needs. I am going to install Windows Server 2019 Data Center. Since I need GUI access, I have chosen Desktop Experience and click on Next. I have seen people complaining that they are unable to see the GUI after the installation. It is because they have not chosen the GUI or a desktop experience during the installation. So you need to keep that in mind. You may accept the license agreement now. Choose a custom option. You will get the virtual hard disk that you have defined earlier now. Choose that and click on next. The installation now will begin. To save some time, I will fast forward this clip. All right, the installation is now completed and we have to set up the admin password here. Enter the password, re-enter the password and click on finish. You'll get a login screen for the Windows Server and it is asking you to press Ctrl Alt Delete to login. So how do I do that in the virtual box? On your keyboard, press Shift, Ctrl and Delete or you can click on the input menu on the top and click on keyboard and choose Ctrl Alt Delete option right there. Enter the administrator password that you just set up and hit enter. We have installed the Windows Server on our virtual box using ISO and there is one last final step which is to install VirtualBox guest editions on the Windows Server. The VirtualBox guest editions are like drivers which will improve the VM performance. Click on the devices menu on the top and click on insert guest edition CD image. This will insert the virtual disk into your VirtualBox guest edition disk to your a machine. Open the folder icon on the bottom and click on this PC. You should see VirtualBox guest edition image just mounted into your machine. Open the location and double click on VBox Windows Editions AMD64. The VirtualBox guest edition installation will now begin. In the driver installation prompt, click on install. After the installation is finished, click on reboot. That's it, you have now installed Windows Server on VirtualBox environment using the ISO file. Now let's go ahead and see how you can install it using the virtual hard disk as well. Go back to the VirtualBox dashboard and click on new. Name the VM. Make sure the VM name doesn't conflict with the other VMs. So I put hyphen in between. Choose the desired location and the version as Microsoft. Windows Server 2019 and click on next. Choose how much memory that you need and click on next. Now we are going to select the hard disk. Remember during the ISO installation we choose to create virtual hard disk now option. This time we need to choose use an existing virtual hard disk file and attach the VST file that you have downloaded earlier. Click on the folder on the right and click on add to attach the VST file. Click on choose and click on create under the create hard disk window. You may start the VM now. Select the language of your choice and the keyboard layout and click on next. You may accept the license agreement now. After a few seconds you will get an option to set the admin password. Enter them now. You can follow the same step we mentioned earlier to install the VirtualBox guest edition for this VM as well. And that's it, you have successfully installed the Windows Server on the VirtualBox using both ISO and the VHD files. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and if you have any suggestions, please do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.